Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. So this morning I'm with my friend Allison and we're going to take some of her black currants or cassis and make freezer jam with it. So um, she's going to show us how to do it. I've never done it and um, that should be a lot of fun. So let me share with you a little bit about black currants and she's going to film me. So here we go. So here is Allison's black currant bush. <laughs> And it has some leaves on it, but you, you pick these black currants for our jam, or our freezer jam, like a, in late August, right? Yeah, August and September. Okay. So let me share with you a little bit about black currants. Black currants are native to Northern and Central Europe or Northern um, Asia. Um, they're a zone three plant, so it's really good for our area. We're zone four here. Let's tell you about the needs of a black currant plant. So they generally like full sun, but they can handle part sun. They are um, generally like a, a wet, but well draining soil. They also like, um, do not like dry conditions. So if, if you have a really dry spot in your garden, likely they won't uh, do very well. When you're pruning, you're gonna wanna prune in late winter early um, spring, so maybe in February and March for our, our time of the year. And you can take um, the plant, a third of the plant down to the, to the base. You can um, make sure you, um, you can make sure you remove disease, damage or dead branches and then anything that's crossing. So we might have to do some pruning in this, <laughs> maybe in the, in the spring and um, early spring. And um, anything from the center, so that's anything that's growing up the center of the plant, you're gonna wanna prune out. So we wanna create like a little bit of a vase um, structure. And also when you're pruning, another additional thing is that you're gonna wanna prune out anything that is older than three years. Um, the best berries or the, the best berries that you'll get is on a two year or a three year uh, growth uh, stem. So always uh, prune out anything a little bit older than that as well. So here's where Lisa's is saying that we need to do some pruning <laughs> um, so that we get better fruit yield and that the plant is healthier overall. So there's a couple of steps to doing freezer jam and one of the most important ones is actually doing your preparation. So making sure that you have all of your ingredients out for your recipe, all the tools that you might need, um, and, and having everything ready to go. So when once the jam starts to boil on the stove, you don't want to be reaching for things and having to um, get things out after because you want to watch it really carefully because you want it to work and also not to burn. And then the second big step is, is um, actually washing and sanitizing all of the containers that you're going to use. So I had washed these and we're going to put the kettle on to boil and I've also got the pot out that we're going to do, we're going to pour boiling water over everything. So once you have the jam um, done, you don't want it to spoil or mold while it's in your fridge. So you want to reduce all the contamination that you can. So we're going to get that step going. Nice. So this recipe makes about um, four pints, which is about um, which is about four of this of the smaller sized jars. And then I did put a couple extra jars in because sometimes there's some extra. And we'll just wait till the kettle boils, and then we'll pour. I've got. Um, a spoon. This is the best spoon ever. Deer foam from or deer form from Lee Valley, where they're graduated silicone uh, measuring and stirring spoons. And I've got some tongs to lift out the jars, and then we've got some ball freezer um, jam jars from Canadian Tire, which are the best jars for freezer jam and soup and all kinds of stuff you're putting in the freezer. So they have little lids. And I've got a couple of glass jars in here too, so that we can uh, have a little jar for Lisa to take home. Nice. 
So the reason why you like these particular bald uh, jam jars is because you were say, saying something about them popping out easily. Yeah. So if if it wasn't if the if we were using this for say um, something that we like not freeze your jam like something we want to get out of the container, they make a newer version of them, but they are graduated and wider at the top. So then they actually, if we were freezing something, we want to plop it out. You just have to heat the bottom of it and it pops right out. So there's bigger versions of these that are excellent for soup. Nice. And maybe we'll do that on another time. Oh. Carrots or something from the garden. So. Nice. I like your planning. We're going to carefully pour the, pour the water over just to cover them. And it just is an extra. Making sure that there's no nothing that we missed when we wash them. And sanitizing. Yeah. And then the tongs are so you can lift out your hot containers. And then I have a clean tea towel out to put them on. So that's three. Four. So we'll see if the recipe And it's also important to make sure you have good tongs, so you don't want to have tongs that are flimsy because um, you don't want to drop and break your glassware. Mm -hmm. And if you are putting glass jars in the freezer, um, you can use new sealing rings for your jars, but you don't have to because it's the you're not actually sealing the jars for shelf storage, that it's going to be the freezer that keeps the food, the jam from spoiling. Nice. Okay, so we're just hold on. So the next thing we're going to do is just walk through the recipe. So this recipe calls for four cups of berries, and these are the black currants. And if Lisa comes in close, I did freeze these. And I had um, popped the stems off with a little knife and we'll maybe, when the jam is going, I'll maybe show you some in the freezer that don't, oh, there's one that I missed. So see, it has a little stem on it. So you wanna make sure that as much as you can that you've got all your stems off. Um, they don't have to be perfect, but you don't want big long stems and leaves in your jam, that would be gross. Mm -hmm. So there's four cups of black currants and I had, froze these um, after I picked them and now we're going to put in so this recipe does call for one and a half cups of sugar um, and it isn't if you want your jam to set properly you do have to use sugar but sometimes there are recipes out there for using honey or agave and it just it will make a jam like substance but it won't really set like jam mm -hmm. we're not using pectin at all in this recipe that there's natural pectin in the black currants mm -hmm. and there's other berries that you can do um, without pectin like um, like apples and and you could do a mixture of black currants and blueberries or black currants and Saskatoon is really oh, nice. nice as well. So so there was one and a half cups of sugar. And so, then so Allison, would you put them all in the same container when like same pot when you're when you're doing them together? Like yeah, if you're so adding you in Saskatoon, do a mixture of berries like you didn't have enough, and you're going to do the wild like frozen blueberries from the store if you have blueberries you could I wouldn't put raspberries with black currants but any of the Saskatoons or blueberries you could have so huckleberries you could put mm -hmm. with the black currants mm -hmm. and, and it would be the same cook time yep same cook time because they're all really the same type of berry right so we're going to put a tablespoon of lemon juice in and you can see that the spoon is graduated so we're going to just spill it up to the tablespoon. That's close enough. 
And the lemon juice just gives it that bit of acidity and helps to release the pectin from the berries. And that's it in terms of ingredients. I'm gonna turn the stove on high and then we're gonna wait, it's gonna take just a few minutes for it to start to soften up. And then we're gonna mash the berries a little bit. And I forgot to do my masher. And we're gonna heat wash the masher and, and reheat the kettle a little bit. So one of the other pieces in terms of prep is actually putting two small um, plates in the freezer. And we're gonna use those right here. We'll probably just use one of them, but we'll, Put them in the freezer, make sure we don't break them. And we're gonna spoon the jam on them after to make sure that they're done. And while I'm in the freezer, this is berries that I haven't taken the stems off. So if we were, and I had thought that I would have to do that, um, if we were gonna make more jam, then just while they're frozen, they actually stem faster when they're frozen. And you can you can um, take the stems off them. Are you just lopping off the top? Yeah, you just lopped off the top and the bear the little stem, mm -hmm. and then and I probably should do this the other way. Take those out of there. And I hear our jam is starting to bubble. I probably need to. So we'll come back. But if you want to see, and I've just got a little a little paring knife, and you just pop the stem. And the knife doesn't cut your finger if you're not slicing into it. So you can absolutely just pop the stem and the, the blossom off. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it takes about 10 minutes to do that. Okay. Another important um, piece that I have ready is actually a, um, a candy thermometer. So this is from Lee Valley. And so is the apron and the red deer farm spoons. Um, that the candy thermometer, you can set it to Fahrenheit or Celsius, and it's all electronic. And it's super important to use a candy thermometer whenever you're making jam or anything that has to get to a specific temperature, and it's much safer um, to have a good one. Well, that's melting down quite quickly. Yeah, so the sugar is starting to melt. And how long does it usually take, or do they suggest? So the sugar to melt, I don't know, it's two or three minutes. And then once we get it to the boil, then we're going to, I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit to about six. And we're going to clean off our masher. So you can see here it's starting to where the sugar is has, has turned everything to liquid and is melted and it's just yep the graininess of the sugar is coming out so we're going to mash you don't have to do this step but it does make the jam less of a jelly with berries in it and more of a jam. So I'm just gonna mash the berries just a little bit. If they're quite juicy, you might not have to do this, but I like them mashed kind of so it's still chunky and you can still see the berries. So I've never seen a masher like this, Allison. This is not like a regular masher, like my potato masher. Can you no. mash potatoes with that? You can. And it's Pampered Chef, so nice. this is another excellent utensil that I have lots of utensils. Mm -hmm. um, and you can, ma it's a chopper and a masher. Oh. So you can, anything you're wanting to do into a, into a, a chop. Mm -hmm. um, and I have another one that I use that I try and keep them separate, um, but it's excellent for ground beef. Oh really? So when you're cooking ground beef, so that you can cook it and mat and chop oh, it up. That's so that brilliant because I always get lumpy. Yeah, and, and it takes a while to get the lumps. Yeah, out. and then it makes sure that you get it cooked. So this is my my non-meat one. Nice. All right, so 
so I think that's given some of the more the bigger berries a chop. That's probably enough. Okay, so now comes we're gonna get this up to the boil. So you can see the little bubbles are starting. And once it's up to the boil, we're going to stir it about every 30 seconds or so, so it doesn't burn. Okay, nice. This seems so easy, Allison. It is. Freezer down is easy peasy. So we are going to clip um, our candy thermometer on. So as we get going, I'm going to make sure that, there, that's good. So you can see it's rising, so it's at 196. and. Calgary's at a high enough altitude that we are going to aim for 218 and it will start to slow down here now. Okay, this may be a stupid question, but why does altitude matter? So the temperature that you need um, to, like temperature for cooking changes with the altitude and so you want to, the higher the altitude, then the higher the temperature that you need to go to. So. Oh my goodness, yeah. I had if no we were idea. If this in Vancouver, then we would be at, uh, at a different temperature. Wow. Yeah, so there's it boiling. So there's a full, a full boil. So that's at 221. No, 221. What's that? 211. 211. Fahrenheit. Okay. Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> it is 150. Oh no, this way. Never mind. I have an alarm. 150 no, Celsius? No, I have an alarm set on that. Okay. So I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. So we want to keep it at a rolling boil. And I'm going to set the timer just so I don't lose track of time. So we'll put it on for about four minutes because it has been boiling. So you don't want to have it boil over. Mm -hmm. And so you want to make sure that you keep stirring it. So you kind of got to be in front of it. You absolutely have to be in front of it. You got to hold the pot. And this would not be something that you'd want to have children under 12 do. Mm -hmm. And not without supervision. Yeah, because it's so hot and spitty. That's right. My junior high home ec teacher taught us to, to, uh, to stir in a figure eight. Oh, that's cool. I never learned that from home ec. Or I don't remember learning it from home ec. <laughs> that's more likely. <laughs> yeah, so you can see that it's starting to foam. So if you, if you had lots of foam, you actually can take... So if you have some foam, if you don't want foam in your jam, you just pull the foam out with a spoon. Oh, because it will kind of collect at the top. Yeah, it collects and makes your makes the jam be cloudy on the top. Okay. I'm okay with foam, but we'll take some of it off. Wow, that's yeah, so, so, so see, good. This is cool too. So after it's boiled and gone really frothy, now it's coming back down after I stirred it so it's mm -hmm. not as frothy. I'm gonna mm -hmm. turn the heat up just a little bit more. That was probably when I had the heat down. Mm -hmm. So this is, I've never tried freezer jam before. It, does it taste like regular jam? Yep, it's, to, it's totally set. It's just not sealed where you do the water bath and seal the jam so you can put it on the shelf. So you store it actually in the freezer and then when you want to use it, you can keep it in your freezer at least six months. I keep mine for about a year. Oh, wow. Um, and then when you put it in the fridge, usually it wouldn't last that long, but it should last in the fridge, like kind of at least a month or two in the fridge. Oh, so once you take it out of the freezer and start you using it, it you put fridge. it in the fridge. Okay. Yeah. And then it'll like a month or two afterwards. Yeah. That'll be easy to finish. Oh yeah, I never last that long. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad I'm getting some of this. <laughs> I'm gonna try it on toast tomorrow morning.
Guys, if I could send some smells your way, man, wouldn't that be a cool feature on a video? <laughs> Scratch and sniff video. Well, it is the cassis, like you can yeah. really smell the cassis. Smell. Yeah. Well, apparently they use it for dyeing too as well. Oh, yeah. Like, yes. That's the other reason I have the apron on. Yeah. Also from Lee Valley. Yeah. Um, is you don't want to get this on your clothes. Yeah, because it would be really. All right, so we got one more degree to go. And it is 210 that it needs to get to. 210. The other trick with using the thermometer is you want to make sure that it's actually in the jam and not at the bottom of the pot. Oh right, not so touching the bottom. The bottom. The, at the bottom, when we first looked at the thermometer, it was showing 210, but it was actually on the bottom of the pot. So. Right, so we said actually yeah. measuring that instead of the, the jam. Yeah. I'm going to get Lisa to get one of the frozen plates out of the freezer. So here I go. Do you want both of them? Just oh, one. one. So we're going to take a spoonful. And the reason we have two plates in the freezer is that if it's not done, then we have a nice cold one to test it again. So we got a cold plate. We're going to put our jam on here. And we're just going to wait for a minute or so. And this is going to help us to see if this is going to set. If your jam doesn't set for some reason, which happens, um, every batch of jam is, is unique and special snowflake, mm -hmm. then you can always put it back on the heat. So if you've even got it in jars and it's on the, in the fridge and it's still more watery than you want, you mm -hmm. can put it back. And this jam is, starting, is definitely thickening up. Right, it's not so runny on the plate. No. And so this is as much as I want it to thicken up. You could make it so that when you push your finger, yeah, and then it, see how it stays. Mm -hmm. So that will firm up. And that's a timer for, that was about six minutes. So how did you learn this, Allison? Did you, did someone teach you? Did you just like try it um, out? My parents were really big jam and canners and there was, often whole kitchens full of stuff when mm -hmm. we lived in Saskatchewan you didn't get a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables except out of your garden so mm -hmm. and um, yeah and so I've wa had watched them do different kinds of jams and then I just figured out the freezer jam from the internet. Neat! Yeah so let's get this into our jars so you don't want to wait too long so if we were doing a big monster pot of jam, probably would use a, a ladle, but this spoon works really well. And then we're going to make sure we put the berries um, and divide it up. Just get an equal amount of berries yeah. and liquid in each yeah. one. Yeah. So does it have to cure in the freezer for a little while? We're actually going to have it set up on the counter. Okay. And then it's going to go into the fridge to cool. And then once, probably tomorrow, I'll put it in the freezer. Okay. Once it's actually set up in the fridge. I'm okay. going to give Lisa a sum to take home. Yes. This one's mine. Right there. Nice. So if you wanted to fill them all the way to the top, 
like to the fill line, then this recipe would make about, well, probably without the little one, we probably would have been close. Like our three good sized yeah. ones. So you're not filling it up to the top, no, but you I could, could potentially. I could, yeah, there's a fill line, I'll show you. So if we wanted, I think I'm gonna do that actually. So we're gonna do, so you can see there's a fill line Perfect. on the side, right, right there. So you don't wanna go past the fill line because it will expand when it's in the freezer. That's good, we didn't get a bunch on the side, and I'm gonna get a wet paper towel and clean off. And I'm gonna use the hot water. And clean off the rims, so you don't have sticky rims, because otherwise your lids will get all sticky, and we didn't get any on the outside, nope. And you could do this with a clean cloth too. So. Mm -hmm. But you definitely wouldn't. You wouldn't. I wouldn't like. You wouldn't want to do it with a dish cloth, like a dirty cloth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you're trying to keep everything sanitized? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then this one. It's done. Ooh. Hot, hot, hot. So we're going to just gently put, we're not going to screw them on tight, so we're just going to put it on loose. And then we can, we're going to leave them out on the counter just loose. Okay, that's it. And then once they're cooled, I'll get one from the freezer actually that I've done before. And then these are the labels. These are excellent, excellent um, Bernardin dissolvable labels. Nice. So then you can write your what what it is and when you made it. And then the awesome thing about these is that when you're done with your have eaten it all up, and you're going to clean your jars, the the label actually and the glue fully dissolves. Oh, so nice. you don't have to scrape off. The labels they actually just dissolve in hot water nice and you can just wash your jars nice and you don't have to worry about all the stickiness all no. over no mm -hmm. so that's what we'll do after and that's our freezer done do i want to taste some of it yeah. yes okay hold oh. on got it wait i have to bring down the mask yeah okay Mmm, yummy. The temperature um, that if you're making jelly, it would be 220 degrees Fahrenheit, and we'll convert that into Celsius. And that, which is, um, that that's at sea level. And then for every thousand feet of altitude above sea level, you subtract two degrees Fahrenheit. So the jam that we were making was at a similar altitude to Denver is mm -hmm. what Calgary is so mm -hmm. we were aiming for around 210. Okay so we had to take 10 degrees off. Yeah so wow. Yeah. So we ate the last of our um, black currant jam but I had this is uh, this is crab apple jam that was in the freezer so just stays in the freezer so that's what this will become and then this was nectarine jam that I had in the fridge so there you can see it's set and that's what the the black currant jam will do so I'll leave it on the counter to cool um, I'm just going to put these away but we'll leave it on the counter to cool so that it's room temperature and then we'll put it into the fridge and then once it's overnight in the fridge then it will go into the freezer and if you want to see, let's look at Lisa's one. 
It's already setting. So you can already see that it's starting to set and it's that nice glisteny, shiny. That's the, that's the sugar. Mmm, nice. Hey guys, so that's it for today, but um, Allison was sharing some, some like this may be a flavor that you're unfamiliar with, but if you've tried Ribena, like that's, a, that's an example of how cassis is, or black currant is used in other products. And do you know of any other products, um, Allison, that black currants are used in? Um, there's, you can get candies that are flavored with black currant, lots of London drugs or any, lots of the British candies. So mm -hmm. almost all British candies have a, a purple cassis flavor mm -hmm. and it would be the black currant flavor versus the grape. So mm -hmm. yeah, really common flavor in France and, and uh, the Uni United Kingdom and all through Europe. So. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you might try some, doing some freezer jam. It is so delicious, Allison. I was so impressed. It tastes so great. So until the next time, everyone, bye from Allison and I. Bye. Bye. Yummy.